Okay, did anyone? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, if it gets too loud, please let me know. My name is uh, Chip North, I'm in class of 66. And uh, I said, I really feel privileged. So today we'd like to introduce Sergeant Jones. Hey, here. I am really privileged <laughs> to be able to welcome Sergeant Jones and his family to the Red Hawk reunion this year. Uh, coming in here is his wife, Margie, and his daughter, um, Martha. I have some notes here, and believe me, it's not because of a need to remind or what to say, but I try to limit myself because there's so much I could say about this one. But generally, I have seen uh, Sergeant Jones, and I believe that most of you have too, most of you who knew him, as a real icon who looked at the history of Fulton High School. Uh, long ago, you know, 66 was long ago for some of us, so I knew then that there were quite a few people who really Sergeant Jones was a guy who contributed immensely to their success uh, in many, many fields. And then a lot of them he kept out of jail from going to high school. And this, or dropping out of high school, is a thing that he never measured. But when it was announced that Sergeant Jones would appear tonight and that I was uh, going to be honored with welcoming him, my email at least tripled, if not quadrupled, with people who uh, had stories that they wanted to tell. And speaking of the great influence that he had on their lives and their success, and I expected most of that to be military stories, but surprisingly to me, anyway, I would say that less than half of them were. A lot of folks were talking about the success that they uh, enjoyed due to his uh, efforts in business, education, medicine, the clergy, being a parent, for all those names. There's just too many for me to recall. I believe that he taught us uh, almost every important attribute that we uh, would need. Uh, he led by example more than anything that I ever saw uh, in, for a career in the Army where we are filled with leaders. I uh, never saw a guy who led uh, by example any better or as well as sorts of change. Uh, during his years with um, Bulls and High School, I believe, Tim, sir, Sergeant, I'm sorry, I said sir, I'm not supposed to do that. He worked for a living, I didn't. <laughs> but, um, you know, he probably saw 14, 15 classes. So we're talking about hundreds of folks that he had the opportunity to make an impression on. And I think he did that with most of us. Uh, one of the questions I asked myself a few days back when I was told I was going to be up here, and really I asked it of myself during my career when I wanted to try to be more effective as a leader, was how did Sergeant Jones do it? Now, how is he uh, as effective as he was? And I came up with at least five things. One of them I think was God-given. If Sergeant Jones set foot on the parade field, walked into the classroom, wandered down the hallway, it didn't matter. He commanded immediate respect. And notice I said commanded, not demanded. It just came natural. And there were a lot of guys, some of you I recognize, who would goop off in class all day, but he would stand at rigid attention. I'm sorry to jump step by. He had a depth of experience, a depth and breadth that few people have, probably due to his own time in the service. I, I don't know, but he had it. And I know that if you had a problem or if you needed advice, you could go to Sergeant Jones and you would get an answer. You would not get a guess, you would not get a suggestion, you would get an answer. He improvised. Now, high school and ROTC, they had a syllabus, subjects that Sergeant Jones had to teach, and he taught them very well. But he also had a Sergeant Jones syllabus, which was aimed at making us better, uh, you know, as citizens, as adults. So he improvised. He would turn the battalion over to cadet leadership, which gave us a perfect opportunity to practice the skills that we would need later. And he would go to what the Army later called small group training. As some of you know, small group training could be a single individual. It did not necessarily have to be a cadet. There were a lot of people who benefited from uh, Sergeant Jones' advice, not by their own choosing, but because they did something they weren't supposed to do and it did not escape his radar. He was forceful, and he made his point in minimum time. I believe I've heard him speak more words tonight than he possibly could have spoken in 10 years at uh, Bolton. If he acted, uh, you know, throughout his 10 years, he did when I was there. He was extremely concise. His lesson came across immediately. If I needed a paragraph to make a point, he could do it in a sentence. If I 
money in the sense and could use a word. I mean, four or five sentences from Sergeant Jones was a lecture. He certainly didn't want that. <laughs> but he did it one better. He had what I call the two to three second glance. And you may have had to know him a little bit better than, uh, or, than some of you have, but uh, this is it. All you had to do was glance at him, and you knew immediately whether you did right or wrong. And I believe the last thing uh, really contributed to his success was that he really, really deeply cared about each and every one of us. Many of us think he was probably the greatest mentor and motivator that we had when we began to shape our futures as teenagers. And I feel he connected with us like few adults could. And no disrespect to any teacher that may be here or any parent that may be here, uh, this man connected with us. Um, personal example was that when I went through high school, those of you who knew me, I studied very, very hard, and I made some pretty good grades. Not as good as some of you out there, but pretty good. And I had high aspirations of things that I was going to do. And then I got my SAT scores. This is going to be new stuff. Most people in here who knew me, including my brother, who I lied to all these years, but no. you know, this, is true. this is absolutely true. When I got my SAT scores back, I was devastated because they, did, they were not near what I needed to reach the goals I had set for myself. I went through and I looked at the criteria for admission to certain colleges for scholarships, etc., and I was not there. So I decided I would enlist in the Army <laughs> and follow his example. And man, this guy was an icon, so I could not do wrong by doing that. But I told Sergeant Jones of my plans to enlist. He was working with something on his desk there. He didn't even look up at me. He says, North, if you go in the Army, you're going in as an officer. I said, Sergeant Jones, we can't afford it. And they did it. He dropped his pencil. He looked up at me for two or three seconds. And he went back to his work. Not a word. And I knew that I had screwed up. <laughs> now, it took me a while. I think later on that night, I realized that that was that Sergeant Jones had made a statement of fact in the discussion. And I had offered to him an excuse, not, a, not an explanation, not one that was acceptable. A short time later, Sergeant Jones casually hands me a piece of paper. Says, by the way, North, you have a four-year ROTC scholarship. I'm running late. <laughs> Saw people checking the line. Uh, I truly don't remember filling out anything on that application. I think he did it on his own, but it doesn't matter. I had a four-year ROTC scholarship. But Sergeant Jones was not finished with me yet. I can't remember the exact words, but basically it was, you have high goals, you have aspirations, get off your dead butt and make it happen. <laughs> so